Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. It's been a long haul, guys, but we finally made it here. And to give you a quick introduction, this is our finale of The Clone Wars and the Star Force prequels. So we'll be talking all things ending the Clone Wars Season 7, as well as we're going to be discussing our, you know, some favorite movie. But a lot of the masses say Revenge of the Sith was you know, the Star Wars movie to watch at the time. So before we get into that, guys, we'll just get a quick introduction to everybody. Uh, below me, a man of many names, we have Admiral Tarkin. To the left or right of me, depending on how you're looking, we have our um, OG and comic book author, D.P. Brown. And to the cat corner left or right of me, depending on how you're viewing, we have our guy in production, Hitch. And before we get started and diving into this, because we have a lot of stuff to talk about, I know it's been a long haul, a lot of interesting concepts we'll discuss, but uh, we're going to let DP let you guys know where to find us and all about our channels here. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. Make sure that you guys are going there. You will find all our links to all your favorite platforms on social media, at Nerdcyclopedia on Twitter, Facebook, and also on Instagram. Um, if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you are hitting that notification button so anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Uh, we are also on Facebook. We have a group called Carving Out Bounty BS, a Star Wars podcast group. So make sure that you guys are in that group so you can give us some feedback and, you know, chatter and network with, with everyone who's there who loves some star wars stuff um if you are listening to us in the car or on your phones um we do have um we are on apple podcast stitcher um google play um tune in spotify anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast we are there and also make sure that you're just leaving us some feedback at um on uh, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com you know we love your feedback and we'll you know eventually get some stuff on the air for you guys well said well said well guys look let's just dive right into it i'm so excited it's been we've discussed what four or five months of this so i mean you know i'm kind of speechless there's so much so many points to pull from each series but uh we'll just start with hitch i mean what, what are you just what are your initial thoughts over all this because there's really a lot a lot to discuss and Man, a lot is good stuff. so i mean this the, the last four episodes of the clone wars are a really great wrap-up for the series because they fill in the gap for rex and ahsoka with order 66 and and that is you know how did these jedi survive is going to be an interesting story for all of them that do uh because of how thorough the dark lord of the sith is in capturing and destroying his enemies wow just to seeing all of this kind of play out at once uh is really a special treat um i i really really enjoyed the whole like process of like how hard you have to try to deprogram a clone to take out order 66 like what you would have to go through like the, the the steps and i like that they make that like a very clear process and they explain why rex isn't like rex changes <clears throat> and that shorthands you know for every other clone that we've dealt with what's going on um i thought the the way they had the 501st wearing like ahsoka face paint was really really interesting and the fact that they were still wearing it when order 66 happened yeah. Man. Yeah. That's wild stuff. Um, I, I'll keep. I'll, I'll limit my con my comments right now to just these just these episodes. I thought getting some droid action was interesting. This whole like complete this, this the whole um, you know, letting Darth Maul loose on the <laughs> on a Star Destroyer was awesome. I really enjoyed the the episodes of the Clone Wars for sure. The, these these were really really fun, fun fun last set. What about you, DP? So I experienced the whole thing as like a, a just a full on experience. Um, you know, I went online and, you know, there was like an actual um, order of how to watch Revenge of the Sith and these last four episodes, because, you know, if you watch the last four episodes, they actually have the starting credits as like, I guess, the 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 Lucasfilm LTD or, you know, it was something special that was at the very beginning of Star Wars that they brought back you know, for this. So you could tell from the very beginning, you know, these last four episodes were going to be special. So uh, I watched episode nine, you know, went to uh, watch Revenge of the, you know, uh, quarter of Re Revenge of the Sith, went back to um, episode 10 and, you know, back and forth until I ended with, you know, the, the, the end scene, you know, with um, the, the, you know, first appearance of Darth Vader. And it was, it was the context of it made so much more sense than when I actually seen the movie without context or without really 
I guess, caring a whole lot about it back when it, Revenge of the Sith, you know, came out. So to see the sadness of what I knew was going to happen with Order 66 and to see how that played out between, you know, Ahsoka's um, perspective and Anakin's, you know, perspective and everything and just how all that played out was just incredible. This it was it was a it, they they did a fantastic thing on like you know this finale and and the um, last four episodes if you watched them together they could have been in a movie they could have been in a theater yeah what about you Ken yeah um, I I echo that totally uh, I didn't do the you know watch this episode then we'll go to Revenge of the Sith I just watched I watched the last four of uh, the Clone Wars um, and then watched Revenge of the Sith and you know what. <laughs> We like the way Ahsoka helped the clones accept Order 66. I mean, I think she was completely, in, you know, in a good, in, in the right place to do that because she came back, all the clones were for her. She was like, no, I'm just here to complete this mission. When she was done, the Jedi were like, we want you back. And she didn't. And she basically said, the Jedi are evil. The Jedi are liars and deceitful. And that kind of helped her clone army. You know, the, basically the, the clones that were, you know, looking up to her, except Order 66. I mean, I think she was super important in that whole thing. I think she was a very big part of that. Um, I mean, you guys probably all caught that. But, <clears throat> man, when she dropped that lightsaber and just just – just got rid of the Jedi presence from her personality completely. I mean, that was, that was a moment. And then literally all the fade to black. And then when that, when that scene opened up and we were on, it looked like Hoth, right? At first, but you knew what mm -hmm. planet it was. And there were stormtroopers and snow troopers. And, and that, for me, that was a, a great connection moment between the, the sort of the new, the new and the old um all that that imperial technology coming out and then you seeing darth vader he when he bends down and picks up her lightsaber i never saw a personality through a mask mm -hmm. like like that i mean it was he knew who that was and it was like a moment it was a moment where he was you know human again Right. Anakin was like seeing back into his past and remembering all these moments with his Padawan. So, I mean, that I'd like to see more of that. Like, where's that story going? Because he's got to really think, wonder what's going on with Ahsoka. But that was, I mean, it was a great finale. And I'm glad they waited however long. What did they wait? 16 years, to, seven years to do this? Yeah. yeah. Something. I mean, they really had it polished. And like you said, when that, Lucasfilm Limited logo came up. I mean, that was that was great for a fanboy. That was a moment. I, I thought that was that was a nice touch to the whole thing. Yeah, and I echo everybody's thoughts as well. I mean, like you know, it's just kind of bittersweet as far as the ending. We all knew it was coming, but to see it lay out the way it did, I thought was exceptional. Um, the time both together. You know, and watching both, like we're saying, I mean, the four of the Clone Wars seem like they fit in the movie, but at the time, Lucas didn't have room for the characters. I mean, if we look about episode three as well, it was, it was a pretty long run movie. I mean, it wasn't a short one by any means. So right, yeah. it's one of those things that, you know, he really didn't have the time. You know, I mean, we can argue and say that stuff should have been cut or moved, but looking at the runtime of that movie, it was still pretty long. So it was one of the longer Star Wars movies. So, I mean, it's one of those things that it's... I'm glad that we had this, you know, you know, footage in this series uh, about a year ago to, to kind of fill in some of those gaps we had during some of the battles and to see what happened and, and ultimately to see another Padawan at the time. I mean, if we think about and go back to this, you know, Obi-Wan lost his Padawan. So at the at this time, with him being a really the I guess youngest Jedi master and everything breaking out, this at some point leaves us with really no other means of Jedi alive. So to see Ahsoka's exile and to see other force users i guess kind of you know involved in this and you know no spoilers but leading into future conflicts you know when we talk about rebels and if that's something we we dive into it, it makes it really interesting um so yeah i really enjoyed it but uh 
you know, for everybody out there listening, I, we're going to jump right into this special point. You know, it's going to be a debate, I'm sure, on your when you listen to, whether it's in the car or live on YouTube. I'm just going to dive right in and I'm going to ask each one of you guys. I have a feeling I know one or two answers, but I mean, it, we have to have this discussion now just watching this. So my question I'm going to pose and I'm going to start at Hitch because I think I know Ken's answer. So I'm going to start at Hitch. Who writes the story better and whose story is better? Dave Filoni or George Lucas? No sentiment. Let's just look at it from a neutral as we look at it as DP. I'm coming neutral with this. So I want to hear everybody's thoughts on we do we like George Lucas of Star Wars or do we like Dave Filoni's? Well, we have to have the point. I, I, it's a, it's a hard, I definitely feel like, like if I had to grade, like Lucas versus Filoni, there would be a point in Lucas's career at which I would prefer Filoni. That point is before now at some point, because I feel like what Filoni is doing right now is excellent. And so Mm -hmm. I want him to be in charge now. And I mean, I would say that I would rather have had Filoni's eye of on continuity involved in the production of the prequels. Because I think what, what makes the clone Wars so special is that it is the, it's the echo back of stuff. Ugh, man, I smacked my microphone. It's the echo back of stuff that was happening uh, in these movies that were already done. And that is what the prequels were. They were echoes back of things that had happened in the original trilogy. Um, if I were to say which version of these things is more successful, I would say that the Clone Wars is more successful at echoing the prequels than the prequels were at echoing the original trilogy. Um, I think that after watching the Clone Wars and then watching Revenge of the Sith, the through line of the plot of the decline of the Jedi is specifically much more clear and concise, way less confusing as to why would the people turn on the Jedi. I get it now. That's that's laid. Um, I think that the characters that are going to be projecting forward in Star Wars from now, so we have Boca Raton. We have... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have Boba Fett, you know, we have um, Grogu and Luke Skywalker, all these characters, uh, Ahsoka specifically, they're all coming out of this series and moving forward in the continuity. And so for you to have an understanding of what is going on in the live action Star Wars world, you have to know the Clone Wars. Um, So I guess I would say that from a creativity standpoint, I would prefer Lucas because you had Lucas had to do a lot of stuff to make this possible to be made. Period, and I think that is what Lucas's genius really, really is. But if I were to say who has created the deeper bench, I'd say Filoni's created a deeper bench. So you're on the fence, fifty-fifty. At this point, I think I prefer having Filoni in charge of Star Wars as it is now. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. What about you, DP? Filoni. Um, and, 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 and if you're talking, you're gun to my head and everything, Filoni. Okay. So that with that being said, everything Hitch said is totally correct. Because if you didn't have the God creating any of this, you know, you wouldn't have Filoni, you know, in his element right now. Because all these are ideas from George Lucas, you know. And it, you would put it this way. Um when I saw Revenge of the Sith in the theaters, it was all, all I went there to do was to see the first appearance of Darth Vader. I knew it was going to happen. I had to wait three movies in order for it to happen. I didn't really care about Anakin like that or Obi Wan and stuff. I just wanted to see, okay, this, you know, he, this guy ended up being Darth Vader, and I was sort of disappointed because he was only Darth Vader for about three minutes in the movie. You know, I'm like, oh, man, you know. Um, but now I'm a grown man, <laughs> you know, grown up and actually had the pleasure of watching this whole series and especially seeing this finale and seeing everything in context. I mean, a, a movie that was probably a three or four to me back then, it's probably raised up to like an eight or nine right now. You know, it was a it was a great movie. It was a great set of it was a great story that that um that that George and Filoni you know, if you had to put them in a um, credit, you know, a, a credit scene and everything um, um, that they combine on a story to create like an overall good, you know, good, 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 you know, good setting, um, you know, for 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 that ending of the, the clones and stuff. So um, gun in my head, Filoni, 
but you know the, the guy created this whole universe so <laughs> yeah. what about you ken let's let's get in i already know so here what i would say i agree with with a lot of the points that the you know dp and hitch said okay so but they had lucas and feloni had different ways of approaching the content so lucas created right the story he created the, the 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 first characters but he had a he was a lot focused on technology he wanted to make something huge you know something that never had never been seen before on a screen okay he wanted to he wanted starships fighting he wanted planets he wanted aliens he wanted all these things so he was really concentrating on the the technology of things and i think that's where sky skywalker ranch was created so he was really on the tech he had the story he knew it was legit he knew people would buy it it was human it was something that we all experience every day so he kind of let that go i'll give you an example when harrison harrison asked him when he first sat in the millennium falcon harrison asked lucas how do i fly this thing lucas was like I don't know, flip some flip switches. He wanted the actors to live, breathe his story. He didn't want to have to nit, nit, uh, nit. you know, nitpick everything and have them like, you know, oh, do this, do that, do that. He wanted the human aspect of things. And that's why A New Hope, if you just take A New Hope out of all of this, it is the, I mean, it's the, it's, it's really a strong film. It really has a it has a great beginning, a great end, and it, it's just a one it's a one it's a one shot that really didn't need anything else. Filoni, on the other hand, goes deep, and he gets into the the direction and the production of things all connected. So you know what I would like to have seen is go back forty years, have Lucas and Filoni meet at a bar, and collaborate on the whole the whole project all the way through i mean that would have been the best thing but i think feloni is such a fanboy himself and fell in love with star wars and knows the content so well and that's why that's why when he took over at at this clone wars you know animated series from that point on everything is so rich and so so bingo deep. bingo bingo but, but Lucas still holds the reins of the whole thing. So the best way, so as a leader, as a leader, the best thing to do, the best, what shows a good leader is you're able to let the people that are working for you tell your story for you. So you really, you really need to have both parts. And I, I really think, and that was where Lucas is sort of, if, it, if we call it a downfall, once he had digital film, and 3d animation and he had all these things at his fingertips that he created so many of the things that we you know movies movies tv shows with great special effects and great backgrounds and great looks if you look at the end credits 90 percent of them are all done at luke at skywalker ranch every i mean anything and disney had been using skywalker ranch technology for decades before they bought the thing so i think that's the big difference and do i think one is better than the other no but i think they both have huge hands in this fight that you just you just can't you just can't rule one out over the other i think it would be great if they were together the whole time it, i mean imagine that like I said, I was I was being funny, but if Lucas and Filoni met at a bar and Lucas said, hey, you know, I got this idea of the space odyssey and it could be a Western, but I'm going to I'm going to put it in space. And Filoni was like, wow, it's a really great idea. Let me take over all the character development. You just give me the story. I think we would have had a. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that would have been crazy. So basically, right now we have two on the fence and we have a solid Filoni for DP. <laughs> You guys are both 50-50 roughly, right? Kind of. Yeah, I mean, I I really like, and still I think Filoni's best work is Elf. But yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying, remember where the guy came from. 
so, it's like it's know, like time to trying to say like who's the greatest king of England, right? Because right. there's there's different eras and different needs and, and of, of of governance. Like the if you have a king for conquest, like Odin in uh, in Thor, and all of a sudden you have you need to have a, an era of peace. You can't be the I'm bloody the exactly. If you want diplomacy, you can't have, be covered in blood from head to toe. So no. you have to rule the kingdom differently as it changes. And what I am feeling right now at the end of watching this series is like Star Wars is different because for the first time, the, the time in my head of when is now in the Star Wars universe is not after the Battle of Yavin. That's that's what, what I'm yeah. feeling at the end of the Clone Wars, that there is so much here and it's so deep that this is now, like this is the present time in the Star Wars universe is 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 the pat is the Clone Wars, and because of how, like the release order was for me sequentially, that's never been the case because I always felt like what's next is what happens after Return of the Jedi. So that's where where I always felt like I was in the timeline. So for me, my perspective is very different now, and it's because I I think I have a different appreciation for what Star Wars is, and I think that. Dave Filoni is better would be a better selection to continue that. Although I don't know if we get this to the same place if we start out with David Filoni in charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna side with DP and take Filoni, and it's by it's it's just by one clear reason. And you know, let, once again, we all pay homage to George. I mean, this is his baby; he's done it all. But um, keep in mind as well, during one, two and three is when he got really ill. And he, although he wrote and produced everything, I know for most of two and most of three, he actually was sick. So when we discussed why he walked away, why he sold it and the things that were happening personally for him, I understand he took a, you know, a backseat to it because of just his health. And that's more important than anything. But the reason I'm going to take Filoni and, and DP talks about this a lot uh, and all of us who read comics in context. The biggest thing in the difference, even when you watch four, five, and six, granted this is 30, 40 years ago, it's the character development. And in this day and age, that story he tells and the way he develops characters at the rate of time. Because keep in mind, when Lucas was doing this, the biggest thing was special effects. We can rant and rave about four, five, and six, but the character development, the story was in. Eh. When you watch, look at everything Filoni has done, as far as characters, the story he tells, I mean, it's it's just and to me that's what I look at when you look at a comic book and how quick you can develop characters and especially with this current fan you know in this current day and age with with people how they consume media you want to be able to get something quick you want to be able to tell a story you want to be able to develop characters and the detail in which the rate he does it for you know 30 40 minutes we skip to the Mandalorian he's doing it for an hour 15 on an episode that's arguably a movie you know, I mean, it's just I, I have to give him that edge just for the character development. I know what George has done. He's done great work. But I would like to see Filoni as far as his character development, even if they rewrote four five and six, just because of the way he explains these characters, the way he ties things together. I mean, look how he brought Boba back. We all thought Boba was dead. And then Boba is now I mean, just it's just what I'm saying the way he brings this in. And like I said, I'll give credit to George for everything he's done. I mean, this is his story. But I just think as far as developing people and the way Filoni has done it in his short space is, is next to none. I, I can't see any other Spielberg. I can't see anybody else doing what he does. So so here's here's why I come and I, I totally agree with you, um, T. Mitch. Um, Filoni has the had the has the advantage of, um, of, 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 of of being able to do his you know character work in multiple episodes, whereas um, George Lucas only had the the, um, the the constraints of a two hour movie over a six to eight year period or whatever, you know, with, um, you know, the, the prequel trilogy and that is, and then, you know, the um, regular saga. Um, Filoni had multiple episodes to get all the, 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 the crux and, you know, tell his story and everything. And he does that superbly and stuff. Um, George Lucas, <sighs> Not to say that he would have been good with what I realized with, with, with watching this thing as a whole. Star Wars should have always been like an episodic thing on a, a, a much grander scale than what the movies um, was able to handle. It was much bigger than the movies because 
you know, we you you, re- you 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 watch them and realize, okay, it's a lot more to this universe than what was even being presented in the movies. Hence, what you got in the extended universe when they first, you know, eventually did that, and it was a lot of appreciation to like those extended stories and a lot, you know, a lot of fans, as, you know, as far as that. So you had to live your your universe through that. You couldn't do it through the movies because they was only making them, you know, every two or three years, and then you know they stopped making it. And didn't uh, for about a good 20 years until, you know, the next saga came out. So Filoni had the advantage of, of you know, taking those great grand ideas that Lucas had and um, expanding them over, you know, multiple episodes and getting that character work out, to, out of the way. The ideal thing would, would have probably, if, if, if Kathleen Kennedy and the, the heads of Disney would have been smart, was to take Lucas's ideas for six, seven, and eight and have Filoni refine those. You know, and then you would have had like a probably a much um, a much better outcome or, you know, much more fan satisfaction, because number one, you still had the creator, you know, in the, um, you know, guy in the ship. And then you had his Padawan doing the thing. Oh, man. I, I... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think Lucas had this giant idea. You know, he had this big idea. He wanted everything all at once. And you just can't do that. You can't. You know, you can't go to you know, a, a production company and say, I want this huge everything. And they're going to just go, yeah, OK, we're going to do that. It's going to cost 80 billion dollars to do this huge story. Uh, Lucas had no, con- you know, really no control over that. He had this giant, uh, grandiose idea. Filoni is able to take things down to their parts and detail them and control them and say, okay. And that's why he works so well with these 20 to 25 minute stories. I mean, he works so well there because he got a lot of content done, detailed, energized in these small little pieces. And he did a really good job at it with still keeping with the, you know, the, the, just the, the, the theme of the story and the right. way it's supposed to, the way it's supposed to flow. Lucas was been all over the place. And we see that in, I mean, I Phantom Menace. Yeah, I was going to say, Phantom Menace was the biggest detail for me to where I was just like, can he do it in a short format? I'm not sure, because that was a short movie. I think the hour time was like an hour 40, and that was really like... Yeah. So, let's, and, let's, let's, so Ken, as you said... There's only five minutes that. of good footage in that movie. Five. So, that five minutes. That's how yeah. long. So if you're talking about a short format, he had five minutes of movie, and he made a movie that was two hours long. So I think you might have you might be yeah. honest on. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So we're gonna so we're talking about and I know DP said this. We're gonna talk about Floney versus Lucas. Lucas had okay, this hour forty, hour fifty of a movie, and we nobody liked it. The longest episode of Mandalorian, which was the finale, was an hour twenty five. And, and it ruled. Was, and it ruled, right? I mean, it, yeah, it was great. So it's <laughs> that, it, that's movie it to movie. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. That's that's kind of heads to head. So. Uh, like I said, guys, I know we're having a fun discussion, um, but we're going to take a short break. We'll dive back in. We have a couple, a couple other interesting um, points we're going to, um, you know, for lay around. So hold on a couple minutes. We'll be back two in two. Oh, you know, my God. I know Ken got some toys he need to unbox. Oh, yeah. So. I got. I do got one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that wow that is yeah. slick that is crazy that's a nice man i just saw their lego release the infinity gauntlet is one of their master series that looks pretty sweet uh, yeah you have to get a glass case for that thing yeah <laughs> so yeah we'll jump back into this guys i know hit said like i said he, he has limited time he wants to get some other things done so we'll jump right back <laughs> into it <laughs> Yeah, but that's a countdown clock. It's not. It's yeah. not like. <laughs> well, think about it. We didn't even think we'd make it to the end of this. By the time this was, you know, we thought we might yeah. be button against the baby. So this is like that's perfect true. time. When we started, right, yeah, we started Clone Wars, and we were, and you, and everybody, all four of us, were sort of like looking at the summer anxiously, like, oh, who knows when it'll, you know, what's going to be one day this summer? We'll be eagerly anticipating. But I've been dealing with uh, another e- eager anticipation, uh, you know, of my own. So. It'll be yeah, uh, when we when I'm gone when I'm less present for a while. You'll all know why. It's because we'll we have a a new youngling. Rogue. Yeah. 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 Exactly. A youngling. Well, not a youngling. <laughs> we don't want to say younglings. That's not a the youngling connotation is is bad oh, okay. after what happens right. here. We. <laughs> yeah. Let's 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 talk about that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Go ahead. Start it up, um, T Mitch. Yeah, guys. So welcome back here after the break. Uh, and as we just left off, we were just kind of wrapping up our thoughts as far as, um, you know, basically whose side we were on. It's just some fun banner between us. So, you know, just if you guys want to have those discussions among yourself, you can. It's fun. You know, it's really, it, it, there really is no winner. So, we, you know, we, it could have been two, I guess, two, one if we count Ken and Hits together and me and BP. But, uh, I mean, we all understand it's really Lucas' stories made this all possible. I mean, because personally, arguably, I think the expanded universe stories and, you know, things like that even are more detailed than some of the stuff we've even got with Filoni. So there could even be a third layer to this. I mean, when we get into the real meat of Star Wars and how big they've made it, you know, these Sith stories, these books that these authors are writing and, and big shout out to the books and everybody out there, please read. I know a lot of people don't like to read. I love to read. So those Star Wars <laughs> fictional novels, whether it's Bane, Tarkin, um, bro, they're exceptional, <laughs> exceptional. So I've, yeah, I mean, I promise you team Mitch, our listenership is one of the best read Star Wars listenerships in the world. They they know about the Legend series and they know all about those them. books. I love those books. I mean, yeah, they're, they're all exceptional. I mean, even the books leading up to the newer stuff, like that uh, Legends of Luke Skywalker that led into Episode Seven, exceptionally wrote books. So definitely like the books. But um, yeah, guys, I know we were talking kind of off air before we jump back in, but um, we're going to let DP lead this segment here. And a very interesting point he brought up. So DP, let lead this into it. Uh, what's up with Anakin, man? Anakin, oh my goodness. Well, well first of all, when we start with um Episode, I'm sorry, Episode Nine, but um. Yeah, episode nine of, of season seven, we get a real cocky Anakin, <clears throat> which was a I, I understand that, you know, he he was a certain type of way throughout the whole Clone Wars episode. He's different from Hayden Christensen, period. You know, his attitude and everything. And I was in watching him in, in all com as, as far as a combined experience. It was a little bit jarring to see the 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 way Hayden Christensen was playing Anakin versus the um the guy that was playing, you know, that plays him in, in Clone Wars. So that was a little different. But, you know, his his descent and going to kill him young ladies, you know, uh, Anakin, uh, oh, Anakin, 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 Anakin. I, I, it's, it's, it's so much stuff that you could say about this guy, and he just falls deep and fast because of his love for, um, for Padme. And he's just willing to give up everything, you know, which I guess with this, that's what love is. You know, when you really, you know, love somebody and, you know, you're scared there, you're going to lose them. Um, the plot of 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 uh, Padme dying was a little contrived to me, but I, 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 it, I guess the way it had to go down, it just had to go down like that. Yeah. And remember, the younglings would would have grown up to be more Jedi. So. <laughs> Order 66 was... <laughs> get... <laughs> Ken, why do you think our objection to this is like that we don't understand why they killed the younglings? Like, we get it. <laughs> like, we know... <laughs> okay. Well, then, 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 don't, don't think about it. This is just... It had right. to happen. Yeah, it, 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 everything... Well, I, it's like when you see a sad story and a tragedy, but you just... You just yeah, you know, or car wreck, I guess. You just can't look away. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. These little young like, oh, oh, you know, who cares? They were the they people. were part. They were they were collateral damage. They yeah. they just we're talking they, about the same guy yeah. who committed genocide. So yeah, I mean, so why am I being yeah. out and said about it. it? He's not ashamed <laughs> of his actions. You know, I think I think that that this turn this turn for Anakin. You know, the way it's portrayed here is still a little bit. A little bit. There's, it's weird. It's weird, but, but, right? But, 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 but hold up, Hitch. So so I, 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 in our text message, I was like, Padme, he admitted genocide to Padme, right? Yeah. You know, and she was... She was like, okay. She was okay with that. So all of a sudden, he, he kills a young lady. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe this guy. No, I cannot no. believe this. No, why? Would, there's no way he murdered children. And he's just like... And they, they could echo, they could just like show the picture in picture. It's like... You, you almost want like Ron Howard from Arrested Development to come in and be like, she already knew he killed all those kids. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what, that's what she liked about him. She wasn't even you into know, him until after that. Well, uh, it shows maturity, you know, from teenage love to adult love at this point now. You know, she realizes, I, I don't know why, but she's already, she realizes, you know. That it's okay, not is, that, is that the way you clean up? Okay. So, so my favorite thing about <laughs> this, after watching this, and you see the degree to which Anakin, like, 
is he's sticking with the clones, but that's it, right? He gets to stay the, to, to keep the clones. And, you know, the, the degree to which, you know, he betrays the entire ga- galaxy for Palpatine, and immediately Palpatine goes, I have no idea how to do the thing I tricked you into doing this for. It's almost like he's like, I didn't think this would work. You have to give me a minute <laughs> to figure out what to do next. <laughs> He just said yes. All right, uh, Darth Vader. Yeah, uh, get over to the Let's temple. Think That's about it. that. <laughs> Hitch, you, you lay the ultimate point, and this is the you know one of the biggest points that I drew from watching all this together, and I finally put the story together. So think about what we talked about as strong as Palpatine was, right? Then we get to the scene where Mace Windu is in it. My favorite scene that I still don't think happened, but whatever. So this is the point. Did Palpatine really turn Anakin or did the Jedi turn Anakin? Because ultimately this story has nothing to do with Palpatine turning him to the dark side. And the reason I say that is I felt that Palpatine lost Anakin at this point and Anakin is at a crossroads. He's at the fork in the road. The ultimate driver that drove Anakin to the dark side was not the dark side. It was not Palpatine. It was a Jedi. And the reason I say that is because his moment was when Mace Windu went to kill Sidious. He said, why would you kill him? The Jedi don't do that. And what did Mace say? He's too strong. He didn't want to put him to trial. That's the ultimate no-no. So at that point, is anybody, you know, if you're with somebody, if they tell you that lie that they have stood by, they have oath. This is their blood oath. I mean, it's that's, that's the Jedi's number one. It's in the code. So for Mace Windu to break code at that point and break code of call during a tense battle situation in war, that's the enough to throw anybody the opposite way. So I've always felt like that was the biggest turning point is not only, I don't think Palpatine turned him, I think the Jedi turned him because at this point, this is the end game. They're sporadic. And like I said, granted he wouldn't have went to trial, that is the Jedi code to not execute. Exactly. And again, that's Palpatine's behind the scenes control of the so? whole. Thing. I think it's behind the scenes control, but at this point, he has no control. It's Mace Windu literally making his mind up and making a choice. That... And who made Mace that angry? <laughs> Sidious. Right. Sidious drove Mace to make that decision against the code. Anakin saw that. All of a sudden, it's not Sidious, it's the Jedi. That was... But ultimately, it's always been the Jedi. I mean, look at the, the the way they've been. You know, we've seen this as I mean, we talk about and we talk about the, the military aspect and even leading up to this movie. The Jedi weren't the Jedi we thought they were. They weren't really protectors of the good. They really were just a form of military production for the police. Republic at the time. Yes. They were police. Well, Pal- Pal- Palpatine exploited that, though, you know, behind right. the scenes and everything. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was it was a master chess player putting things in, in a position to where the Jedi ended up making a choice that they made. I mean, the, the way Palpatine just played everything, you know, just he just played everything masterfully, <clears throat> you know, to and get what he wanted. What makes a great leader not a, le- a great leader doesn't make the decisions on all on their own. It's right. they they. They find a way to make the people that they lead make the decisions. So no matter what happens, they come out okay because, well, they didn't do it. It was all these other people that made the decisions. And that's what leadership is. Leadership is being able to lead and encourage people to make decisions that work for them, but also work for you. Right. Greatest leader. All time. So oh, first yeah. and foremost about Anakin Skywalker in this scene. Anakin's a huge hypocrite because if you remember <laughs> like literally like an hour before, you know, he's 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 like up oh, capture Cal Dooku and the Chancellor goes, Nope, kill him. He's too dangerous to be left alive and Anakin yep. just goes, Okay, whack and cuts his head off. And and when you look at that as a parallel to this Mace Windu scene, literally Mace Windu says exactly the words that like almost exactly the words the chancellor says he's too dangerous to be left alive I think is what I'm sorry I love Samuel yeah. Jackson so much <laughs> like this this is like the best casting they did in the in the, uh, the PTs right all right so he says he's too dangerous to be left alive and An- what does Anakin say Anakin says no I need him is what Anakin says and then he cuts Windu's hand off and then the emperor kind of goes like I can't believe that worked. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, uh, yeah, you'll be real powerful. Uh, anywho, I I think that Anakin, 
Anakin is turned because he's he he is arrogant in his own power. Because what Yoda says when he looks at the future is the future is always in motion. You never know what the future is going to hold. The future could hold a portents of doom. And if you focus on those possible futures, they'll dominate you. It's what Yoda tells Luke in, in Empire Strikes Back. That's a paraphrase. Uh, what happens to Anakin? He is consumed by these these feelings of ownership over his his wife and his children. And that attachment drives him to focus on the futures where bad things happen to them to the mm -hmm. point where he is obsessed fear. with avoiding them fear. fear fear and think about every single time we see anakin do this in the clone wars and a bullet goes right by his head right every single time he does that that's him seeing the future and moving and the bullet goes whizzing by his head every single one of those you have to stack those on top of each other these these intuitive decision makers are gonna they don't they don't go check for like outside verification at a certain point anymore when every single thing they think is going to happen happens and once you put anakin in the pressure cooker point. of the clone wars he's constantly doing things that should be impossible seeing that he's going to do them it's like visualize and achieve is what he does sees that he's going to do it does it and then comes in and says i guess i knew i knew better than you that's yeah, literally his entire like career in the clone wars and so it makes sense that he would do the selfish thing even though we know the promise is false because the devil's promises are always false um that's why he kills mace purely to preserve sith knowledge right because he's focused on the future in which padme dies but by doing that what yoda says when he says the future's in motion you can't focus on this dark destiny you bring it about this is the warning he gives luke and Anakin, by staring at this future, by staring at his wife, by like dying and and suffering, he creates she, the world where this happens. She she ended up dying anyway. I mean, right. it was everything yeah. she he did was all for naught, and she ended up. And then the no scene at the end it just had me dying. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, okay, so let's fast forward this then. We already know that Sidious has the power to project things in the mind when we saw the story with Ray and Ben and the voices. Is this not him making these visions in his head back at this time? Oh, certainly. He has the same force ability. This is the manipulation so, of Sidious. Exactly. This, this is what is so... He this is what is so... Die until he manipulated he just... his mind. Correct. Yeah. He, she would have never died. He manipulated his mind into thinking that, which then caused the stress for her to die from a broken heart so to speak or whatever you know she's dead whatever that's yeah. and in fact i think that that explanation of what happens to her is the best explanation i've ever heard of what happens to padme at the end of episode three she dies whatever that's pretty much <laughs> that's pretty much how that goes it's like oh, why is she dying and then the robot comes out and the robot's like look the plot is killing her. <laughs> that is what's happening. We don't know what it is, but she's dying because she's got to die. I, I sort of like the way that, um, you know, when Darth Vader, you know, um, becomes, when Anakin come, becomes Darth Vader, the first thing he asks is, is about Padme. And we still get that last, we get the last remnants of um, Anakin's humanity, even though he's puts on the, um, the, the helmet um, when he goes back to, um, that planet to the to, to pick up Ahsoka's, um, you know, lightsaber, you know, that was on the ground and everything. So we get like Ken was talking about earlier. We get those last remnants of Anakin's, you know, humanity there, and we don't see that again until, um, um, Return of the Jedi. Spoiler <laughs> like, alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> More which which we have no explanation More. of why he has no connection to to um the the, no the R two D two or Ahsoka. No. Just a blue car, you know what I mean? Like if I if I have a blue car now, I've been thirty years. You show me a mo that same model car, I'm not gonna just assume it's my car. <laughs> I'm gonna think it's a different car. DP, you you get more of these um human elements. And Star Wars Rebels as well, so that's a spoiler alert. Okay, okay, okay. But, okay. Uh, I, I gotta I mean, wait. Yeah. Okay. So, but even even like you're saying this, I mean, it, when you read, you know, expanded universe legend stuff, or even things that we've found to be um, official interviews after this, think about this. I mean, he's always battling that light side versus dark, even till the 
to his death, helping his son out. I mean, the I, the whole idea of this suit, allegedly, and it's been said by Lucas and some other people, was Palpatine's way to basically depower Anakin. He's seen that Anakin at some point, if he you know, brought him back as human and kind of made him more of like a Luke Skywalker kind of you know, half human, half cyborg, was going to have power. So the whole idea of a Vader suit, and it's, it is a canon thing, that his Vader suit is to depower his abilities, which is why he doesn't use Force Lightning, which is why he doesn't have all the abilities that typically Sith have. That whole suit is the idea, is to depower him because the Emperor is in fear of him because he knows that he would become the new Emperor. Uh, he never, he never uh, went in the role along, okay. he went in the role alongside him, but below him. He knew uh, that Anakin was going to be stronger than him. Hmm. That makes sense. Makes I a whole lot of sense. One thing about about seeing Anakin go into the suit and seeing Vader is that the Clone Wars has really reframed that what what they're doing with him to me, and, and, and it's it's this idea that the Sith are so terrified of death that they'll do anything to stay alive, including all these augmentations. You know, and it's not limited to Vader. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of other media where the Sith have masks or some of the, like their jaws got busted off and they're just like being kept alive by machinery artificially against their against their time and that is their weakness it's the thing they it's the one thing they're afraid of and when you look at what the jedi have done is effectively by reversing that by being fearless of death they've conquered it and now what what they're able to do what what obi-wan has done what yoda has done what Luke Skywalker has done since Episode Eight really happened, sorry, Teamish, uh, is conquer death. So they have no fear whatsoever, and that is the reason why, from a uh, ontological perspective, the light side is more powerful than the dark side. Yeah, I, I thought the reason that Darth Vader, the, the Darth Vader suit was because Obi Wan kicked his ass <laughs> on Mustafar chopped his legs off, dumped his torso into a lava stream. I think that was a draw. Freud, man. Come on. That was, that, that was a draw. The plot killed the plot did that to Anakin too, because it there's no way draw. he should have jumped. He jumps a exactly. hundred feet in the air routinely. He had the high ground. Obi Wan had the high ground. It was a the pitcher's whole mound. Right. <laughs> <laughs> pitcher's Three mound. feet up. He's like, don't try it, Anakin. Anakin, <laughs> and, Anakin, and he, I have the high tried, ground. Tried, and it was it was all over. It was all over. Imagine, imagine if someone would have taught Anakin about jumping to the side. What what would have happened? <laughs> what would have happened instead of jumping right hey. over the right over the guy with the laser? I mean, sword. It, this is the same guy who ducked the um, you know, it ducked it. the bullet and everything. So he could so, yeah. so that's a good point too. See, this is this is this is where where the depth of this watch is is there because you're right, DP. He sees himself doing it. Anakin Skywalker is arrogant in his own in his own abilities, meaning that he he says, "I am going to jump over him," and has done it so many times that there's no reason for him to put the safety on. Right? There's no reason to check and see if there's a net because he's made this jump a hundred million times. There's nothing for him to worry about. It's well, how he acts. Him. It's how he acts when he's Vader too, right? I know exactly what's going to happen. He's an unstoppable monolithic force of destruction because he knows the next three minutes are going to go the way he says, the way he thinks. And and seeing that in action in, in Rogue One, right? Prime Vader just really tearing stuff up. Mm. Man, it really it really sinks in. And look, this depth of... This philosophical depth was missing in 2005, right? This motivational depth was missing in 2005 this idea of what the real the real conflict is between sith and jedi was missing in 2005 and so the product that i'm consuming now is much better much better because of all of the stitching that has been done to stitch episode two and episode three together with the rest of the series and that's really what the clone wars is it ties those two yeah. things together and gives it makes it so that every single you know throwaway character in episode three that gets it is a big problem for you and it, it makes jar jar more uh palatable too no it I'm does not definitely <laughs> a better character uh based on the uh, information we received from the clone wars so i i agree with you hitch uh clone wars stitched together 
one, two, and three and gave Jar Jar a permanent place in the Star Wars universe. And he should be revered as a, uh, a, a big player. And uh, yeah. Oh, you guys are You know like, what? Yeah, discussing this, once again, is going to lower my expectations for seven, eight, nine. So I'm docking him another point. <laughs> oh my god! I'm going down again, bro. I'm just, I'm gonna have to get a red alert. Listen, a red alert. It's, it's just getting so. The more I watch this stuff, the more we get into this, and then I think about it, it's playing in the back of my mind all the concepts, and then I'm seeing these movies. I'm just like, how? Like, this just it just doesn't work. It doesn't. So you're gonna tell me that Mace Windu has one arm chopped off and he can't block a lightsaber. Ray is dead, and she blocks it on one knee. Well, it's a Super Saiyan version of this guy, right? So he's even stronger than he was before. And she blocks it with one arm. And then her second arm actually is fixed, and she has two lightsabers, and she can... Stop. Okay, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to stick on continuity, it's, it's too. It's the plot so. that did it. Yeah. It's the plot. Come on, Come yeah. on man. So, yeah, I think, you're too, I think just... you're too hard on those three. But I think that oh, we'll try, it's we'll telling. Find out. It is telling that the most awesome thing that Luke Skywalker does after Return of the Jedi happens on a TV show. <laughs> yes. that was an awesome you know, thing I'm, to I'm see. gonna go back i'm gonna go back and rewatch that scene because that and he's gonna take another I mean, point yeah that introduction is just like i still can't get over that episode i really can that's probably one of my as a star wars fan and you know if you want to go out of the room and say your your moments i mean that's probably one of my biggest moments i mean that's just like because i you know when you saw the vehicle pull up it was just like ahsoka is it somebody else? And then when you saw the lights, it just, it took my breath away. That's one of the only moments I think literally that I was just like speechless. Yeah, I, I just yeah. couldn't stop. You know what I mean? You just, you, you, I couldn't even talk. I remember my wife being semi up and I was watching it and I literally just, I didn't move. I don't even think I blanked the whole scene. It's just like, you, you, you would have th- you would have thought like another world war happened and wait, the world war, world war happened and wait, Twitter blew up, you know, that, I, that I day. Couldn't I mean, that it, was, it, was, it was crazy, but let's talk about um right quick. The, this just the whole production of these last four episodes, just production of season seven. But the last four episodes specifically could have been a straight movie. I mean, the the way it flowed, the way um just 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 the pacing of the um the story, the the musical cues and stuff that came with it, and the sadness of the siege of Mandalore. You know of of you know uh, the, of, of Ahsoka's realizing that the Order sixty six. Just seeing it from her perspective. What the heck is going on here? You know, all the her um clone war um you know um, um soldiers turning against and how she had to just um just just um, navigate her way out and save Rex, you just know, as the escape. only one. Yeah, she just had to escape, right? Yeah. Keep in mind she's failing every literally Jedi die, you know, due to their connection to the force. So as each Jedi master is dying, she fills it and it's even getting more and more scarier for her because she doesn't understand what's happening until she gets to Maul and everything happens. But yeah, you imagine that happening that your leaders are all dying and you can sense or feel that. I mean, that's, that's and, a and, tough we're, thing. and we're seeing the leaders die in revenge, revenge of the Sith because I'm recognizing all those characters. I'm like, wow, you know, <laughs> and even, even like, you know, Grievous and everything, I'm seeing like, well, he only lasts for a second, but in the context of home Clone Wars, bam, he just got dead by Obi-Wan. Uh, but yeah, we're seeing like all the Jedi, you know, fall and stuff, and you know, uh, Ahsoka's and and uh, Yoda, man, I, and and a place that they arrive to, especially Yoda, you know, having to just go off and just be on his own and everything. It's it's just a sad, it's, it's, it's a sad tragedy of a story. Order sixty six was sad. It was sad. It was a scary moment if you <laughs> if you really think about the context and relations of of. of of you know what Hitch, Hitch can attest to, like past histories of empires falling, man, right. crazy. But it, it 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 had its place and it was well played. It was, it was well played. It was yes, put in the right mm-hmm. moment in time where you had the ultimate conflict. You had the clones all of a sudden that they were basically uh, uh, Ronin. They were disenfranchised. They were now their their whole the leaders that they thought were there were the answer the right the right thing are now criminals yeah. in their mind and and that's how you overthrow a, a, a government that's you get the you get the military first to, to to fall 
you get the military to, to turn your way. And then all of a sudden you've got control of the entire house. So, I mean, it was perfect. It was, yeah. it was well done. It was quick. Yeah. None of those Jedi suffered. It's all right. I don't they know. Some of them seemed like they had a pretty bad time. I'm <laughs> some of well, the bunch well, of blaster well, bolts. Yeah, well, a couple okay. took a black couple shots to the back. That's pretty bad. I mean, yeah, and they well, they were shooting that little kid when Space Jimmy Smith was trying to show up and see what was going on. <laughs> I mean, the little kid was just like 10, 12 years old, and Space Jimmy Smith is like, you know, like where's Sipowitz? And then they're shooting the little kid, and he's like, ah, run away, <laughs> Sipowitz. <laughs> and then they're, they're like, no, don't right. shoot him. He's a senator. Like, right? Like, like they'll just let him go. And then like, they I guess somebody saw, right? <laughs> where's Sipowitz? <laughs> I love Space Jimmy Smith, by the way. So, I mean, just, just watching this and wrapping up things, I mean, you know. NYSW. <laughs> what would you, you know, what would you think? I mean, I, I honestly think that you can do um, a movie based on Order 66 alone. Or if Filoni had an hour and a half. I mean, I'd like to see Star Wars Order 66. You could that's do a think, series of these. Disney. Where I'd it's love like, to see Order 66. Yeah. You could do yeah. a whole series where it's like where you just start showing Jedi go through Order 66 and sometimes they survive and you get a like a, uh, you know, uh, like Plo Koon episode two, you know? And obviously he doesn't get one because he does get it in the, in the ship right away. Yeah. But but you know what I'm saying? Like, you could just keep going. And because of the scale and the scope of Order 66 in the Clone Wars, you could do thousands of episodes of just, just but, over and over. You could just have the Jedi. I mean, it, that's how wanna, big this is. If you really is. want to deep dive, and yeah, you can definitely just deep dive even further into, like, the concept. That's it's great, great point. I mean, well, that's, you where figure, you find, that's where you find Grogu as well, right? That's where you find out where he's at. Well, Grogu's he out there. And then, like, all, you know, tales of, like, escape are interesting. Like, World War II POWs, like, aviators that will get shot down in France, how they go over the Pyrenees into Spain. But they're, in, they're, they're inherently very tense and good. And, you know, the Clone Wars had a lot of those genres I was saying I wanted to see more of. And I think that's one they could do very well. So I'd be interested in, in watching that. You know, the last couple things I've said I think they ought to do, they've just done and shut me up so hey you know maybe 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 i'm just seeing the future <laughs> yep keep hand on the money guys i plan on it i plan on i plan on putting that on auto pay <laughs> <laughs> really right uh, my, mine was yeah I, you know i i gave him the yearly money right up front i don't even want to do auto pay here's your 79.99 for the year i'm ready and i'm also paying for premium so, you know, on an interesting side note, when Black Widow comes out, whatever, I'll pay $30 for the movie. No questions asked. So, you want to do some Star Wars content, you know, premium, Disney Plus premium, I'm ready. Don't give them those. No. Come on. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. No. You know, well, you know that they're going to put those, like, that's going to be the difference between a, quote, movie and a TV right. series is whether or not it's on premium. That's ultimately going to be the designation. Uh, you know, whatever. They're, they're, they basically made, I mean... They already made the Race Squadron series I wanted because that's essentially what Bad Batch is. So mm -hmm. you know, for me, I'm pr I'm pretty satisfied <laughs> overall, which is a weird thing to say, running a critical like a critic podcast about Star Wars, right? They're just yeah. doing like keep up the good work and like that's the feedback. See you guys later next week. You know, it's yeah. just. <laughs> Oh, before we wrap up here, guys, we're going to um, let you, you know, let you guys know we're doing a crossover podcast next week with the girls from a Star Wars journey. You know, they watched the whole um, Clone Wars series and everything, and they've been itching to um, get with us and talk, you know, because we've been pretty much going running, you know, neck and neck at the same time talking about this. So decided to do like a little crossover podcast and get their get everybody's opinion on 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 this whole series. So catch that next week. Definitely, guys. And I mean, it's been a fun, like I said, it's been a fun journey for us, you know, long journey. Hope, you know, everybody's enjoyed it as much as we have. I mean, I, I've been so excited for this episode. We, like I said, ran into a bonus. So we gave you guys double the content today. Um, hope everybody enjoyed it as I have, because, you know, even leave, moving on to this as we wrap up with next week with the, um, the simulcast, uh, it's just, it, it's just so many more concepts. And that's the great thing about Star Wars, as we say. These stories are ever evolving. There's always opinion. There's always discussions. You know, whatever we say definitely doesn't always matter. It can be a discussion for you, your significant other, or even friends amongst each other, which makes our community and Carbonite Bounty BS so cool because it's just a group of friends, a group of nerds, just BSing about Star Wars, things that, you know, you don't have to be a YouTuber or a streamer to do. So uh, definitely appreciate everybody coming along this journey with us, and they're so excited for things in the future. I mean, this has been a five-month haul for us, so 
definitely the biggest concept we've ran with and with your you know viewership it made it all easy for us to do it so definitely look forward to this and please once again before we pop off here top on nerd cyclopedia and, and watch our other things like our nerd cyclopedia flick show a lot of good content coming across on our platforms but uh just as we wrap this up guys thank you again and until next week this is the way this is- Nerd Cyclopedia.